Hello and welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I am back again with another video. Okay, today I am going to be reviewing Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. Killers of a Certain Age. Let me just say something first before I get started. Um, I am a, like, the closet assassin lover, okay? <laughs> I love watching movies uh, about, like, espionage and spies and assassins and, you know, people who are operating under, like, covert you know, authority, you know, things like that. I love that kind of stuff. So I have read a book or two maybe in my lifetime, nothing recently, where that, you know, was the, the plot, the premise, you know, of the book. But none of them were, were memorable because like I said, I can't remember. I feel like I have, but I, I can't call them off the top of my head. I feel like Killers of a Certain Age though is gonna stick with me for a while. Let me give you the premise of this. Okay, I'm, I'm actually gonna read this. Okay. They've spent their lives as the deadliest assassins in a clandestine international organization. But now that they're 60 years old, four female friends can't just retire. It's kill or be killed. In this action-packed thriller by best-selling and Edgar Award nominated author, Deanna Rayborn. You heard me right. Not only is it a woman, check for the badassery love that they're assassins check check but they're women of a certain age triple check yes <laughs> these are four women in the book uh billy mary alice helen and natalie they started off like when they were in their 20s right and they've been with this organization for 40 years so they're in their 60s now right late 50s early 60s and they're getting ready to retire. And so they're given this uh, opportunity to go on this all expense paid cruise, you know, as part of their retirement package. And what happens, and this is all in the blurb, when they get on the, the cruise, I mean, they're, they've been in the business for 40 years. So, you know, they, they know when things are, you know, not as they should be or as they seem. They totally, you know, spot the person who has been sent to kill them. And at first they're thinking it's just a coincidence, but it's like, no, it's not a coincidence. And so I went into the book thinking the only way out of an organization, is, especially like that, it's like the mafia, you, you die. You know, <laughs> you, you can't just leave. You can't just re retire. So that's what I thought at first, like, oh, they're telling them they can retire, but, you know, no, really, we're going to put a kill order out on you. But that's not what happened. They were set up, okay? So I won't get, go into detail about how they were set up or what the setup involved, but I will tell you that, these women, you know, initially I was like, cause I'm like 52 and you know, my knees creak when I stand up. So even though I go for a three mile walk every day, it's that your body is not the same as it was when it was 20. If there was a lot of physical exertion, like these women probably had been doing, you know, for the last 20 years, it seems like just like with athletes, you know, like how their knees or their backs or whatever, from being used and, and pushed to the limit is just not the same. It's, it's weaker in those areas. So I was thinking that during some of the scenes, like, you know, I mean, the author would say like after they did something that they were panting or that their backs were hurting or their knees. But I'm like thinking to myself, even to pull off some of the stuff that they pulled off, I'm like, is that, could they have really done that? But that's why it's a fiction book, right? They were still badass, even at their, you know, I guess geriatric <laughs> age. And I just love that though. There were a couple of uh, flashbacks to like when they were younger, different jobs that they had gone on. And I think that they had gotten smarter, you know, cause with age comes wisdom. And um, they were doing a lot of things where they were working smarter and not harder. So that those things were very believable. Uh, when they found out on the ship, 
the cruise ship that they were gonna, you know, they were being targeted, they were able to get out of that. They were able to get out of that and, you know, most of the book takes place with them being on the run, trying to find out why, you know, kill order has been issued for them. And that's when they found out they were set up and, you know, and, and all of that. Even though their organization had sent people for them, they put a bounty out and they were like calling all assassins, whoever can kill this person. Kind of like in John Wick, like the second John Wick, they just wanted, you know, them dead. And it was funny to me that, you know, Y'all was sitting in all this manpower after four little old ladies. Like, like y'all couldn't couldn't deal with them because they were, like I said, they were pretty badass. Um, so once they found out what was going on, once the women found out what was going on, you know, like in the, the blurb said, it's kill or be killed. So they went on the offensive and they were like, look, we're going to be looking over our shoulders for the rest of our lives, how much of time we have left. And I don't want to go out like that. So let's get them before they get us. And that's kind of like what happens. You know, they start going after these people. And some of their um, tactics that they used, they were so in-depth. And I was like, you know, it made me want to Google some of that shit. Like, can you really do that to somebody? Is that really possible? <laughs> but, I mean, I didn't do it because... I have no desire to do any of that stuff to someone, but it was just, it was really clever if, if the things that the author mentioned in the book aren't actual things that you can do to, you know, disable, disarm, or dismember somebody. It was very clever the way that she kind of laid it out, um, the, the way that they did some of the, the stuff that they did in the book uh, to the their uh, would-be assailants, right? Even though there were... Um, for women, it was obvious there was a character by the name of Billy. She was, she was kind of like the leader, if you will. The When they go back to um, like the, the uh, flashbacks, that's just told kind of like in a third person omniscient voice. But all the main present day chapters are told in Billy's voice. So she kind of leads everything. Every time they went on a mission, like present day to do what they needed to do, she was always there. She was more often than not the person that actually, you know, was killing people. <laughs> so, and her, her backstory, we only get her real backstory. And there were chapters that kind of talk about, because all of them seemed like they had kind of, had lives outside of this organization, which their organization was called the museum. Um, they all seemed like they had lives outside of that, except for Billy. Like she, she was really into this, you know, this, this was her life. So I think she probably also was going to be having the hardest time with retirement. But yeah, I think that, um, you know, I know that I say this about a lot of the books that I read, but I really feel like this one, I could totally see this like as a movie. So much so that I did something that I used to do when I first started the channel. And I don't know if you've been following me all this time. You know, when I first started off, I used to do like uh, casting at the end of every video. I would say like who I thought should be cast if they were to ever make that book into a uh, movie or a TV show. So I did that for this one because when I was reading it, I had to, you know, get that in my mind. I'm like, okay, who, who are these women looking like? Who are, you know, just based on the descriptions or whatever, I came up with uh, actresses that I think that would be great if they made killers of a certain age into a movie and they they need to they really do so uh and the women that i chose they're close to 60 they aren't like in their 60s but i feel like you have to have um actresses who who it would be believable <laughs> if they were doing because there's some physical stuff that goes on in here as well and you know you want it to be believable that these women probably could do something like that so billy right at the gate i thought about robin wright you know after seeing her you know in wonder woman uh and she was in her 50s then like her early 50s then i was like oh yeah i could totally see robin wright as billy you know kicking ass and taking names definitely uh, for the character of Natalie, I thought Sandra Bullock would uh, be a good choice uh, because it, it's something about Natalie. She was kind of like, you know, a little sarcastic, a little dry and kind of like, okay, whatever we have to do, let's do it type, you know. So I think Sandra Bullock would be a good choice for her. 
Uh, there was a character by the name of Mary Alice who was described, you know, when they were younger. And even as they got older, like she was very beautiful, kind of voluptuous. And um, actually in the book, she has a female partner, like, you know, love interest, uh, a woman by the name of Akiko. So, so for Mary Alice, I was thinking Connie Nielsen and for her partner, uh, Akiko, Sandra O. Oh. And then Helen, who she had been married for like 30 years and she had kind of lost her edge. Like even when they were going through all this stuff, like she froze a number of times. Like she just wasn't the same person that she used to be. Um, but you know, she came in clutch a couple of times, but I thought about Julianne Moore, you know, for that, for, for Helen's, uh, role. And, um, there was a, a girl in the book who helped them, you know, get like fake papers and she kind of was like a computer genius, you know, type hacker, uh, to find people and all that kind of stuff. Cause you need that in every spy movie. And, uh, her name was Minka and Billy had saved her from Ukraine in the Ukraine or something something had happened years ago or whatever and she had brought her over and had been kind of harboring her here and using her for her help I thought that uh, uh, Anya Taylor Joy would be a great um, person for that role so yeah killers of a certain age it has it has turned <laughs> spy and espionage thrillers on its head by um, you know, using these four women. It also reminded me of, um, you know, because this has been done, but not with all women, uh, of the movie Red with uh, Helen Mirren, who totally kick ass in that movie, and John Malkovich. I think Bruce Willis was in that movie. Um, Morgan Freeman, I think, was in there. And they even had, like, a Red, too. So you that's the kind of vibe. Like, And they were, like, you know, had been with their organizations forever and um they had retired but I, I can't remember what brought them out of retirement but yeah I was getting totally getting red vibes from that so to do something like that but with an all-female cast I think that would be really cool so so if you're into books like that you know spy thrillers espionage uh governmental uh conspiracies action-packed and then with you know the kick it up a notch to have, you know, all female characters and women that are just like really powerful and strong. Killers of a Certain Age would definitely fit the bill. If you have read Killers of a Certain Age, I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, you may as well go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on post notifications. Thank you so much to everyone who has already subscribed to my channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye.